Hey everybody, happy holidays. I'm saying that because we're kind of in between Christmas and New Year's right now. I know we had a great Christmas here at the Schaefer's and I'm so excited. I know I had told you all that we were going to take a break for the holidays, but I have this awesome soundbite from Corey Koontz about his horse remix that I thought would be an extra special Christmas present for everybody. It's a little long, and it's Corey telling the story of his horse remix that he wrote at the finals this year that he won so much money on in the last two years, and he's kind of a cool, neat little story. So I hope you all enjoy it, and Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Thanks, everybody. Remix has been quite the journey for me. There's a guy named Joe Brayman, JB Quarter Horses. He's out of kind of South Texas, around Victoria, Texas, down there. And when Joe was young and he was rodeoing a little bit, I let him ride my old horse, Iceman, one time, maybe a couple times. So then he was very appreciative, all of that. Then later in his life, he started, he bought some studs and mares and started this whole breeding program and really built it up for a while. And uh, he told me a couple different times that at some point when he had the, uh, like a done colt, which was the same color as Iceman, that he thought would be really good, he was gonna give him to me. So then out of the blue, one night I get a call from Joe and we don't talk very often, like, so it was kind of, wonder what he's calling me for and uh, he said hey I got a trailer coming up to post Texas and there's a yearling colt in there for you and if you can be there you can have that you can take that colt and he'll be yours no questions and the guy's got the papers and the whole deal and so I was like wow well I'm in Austin at the rodeo so then I leave that night after the perf drive to Post, Texas on my way home to Sudan and get there in the middle of the night. Needless to say, Heat uh, Remix was had a halter on and was in the trailer, in this stock trailer, but that was it. And he had not really been halter broke. He had not had any, like didn't even really lead, but he was tiny. So it took me about three hours to get him in my trailer. And then once I did that, I got him home. I basically fed him for a couple of years and then it comes time I'm gonna break him. So I'm gonna do the whole Ray Hunt thing one day. So I get him out there, no halter, no nothing. He's gentle and I mess with him, drive him around. He comes to me, we stop, I rub the saddle pad all over him, put that on, rub the saddle on him, I put that on, and it was, I had this saddle that I had when I was eight years old that I was actually riding when I cut my thumb off, so it didn't weigh as much, so I could kinda rub it around on him, and then I get it on him, I get the cinches around his belly and ease him up, and, and this sucker hasn't moved. I mean, like, he just seems like the easiest thing ever. So I spend a couple hours doing this and he's just standing in the middle of the pen, just perfect. So then comes the time where it's like, okay, I'm on, I take my cap off and I'm, you know, like, okay, we need to move, you know, let's untrack. And I mean, he took a step, froze, looked, looked around, realized he was saddled and then come undone bucking, squalling, bucking around. I had nothing on his head, no, no nothing. Tries to jump a gate, bends the gate, flips over the other side, runs off, had to get another horse to go rope him and bring him back. I mean, it was, so that's how we started. And then I gave him several more months off because I didn't want to get on him and get bucked off and get hurt. And it's like, man, I can't take a chance on, getting hurt or breaking something, you know, I got to make a living. So I end up, what I would do is I would saddle him. He would buck, he would do his thing. Then I would uh, pony him for miles till he couldn't breathe just about, which, you know, not real humane, but 
I needed an advantage. So then I, uh, I would, then I would get on him, and then he would buck with me, and it was just a pain in the rear, really. But Joe had given him to me, so it was like I'm gonna conquer you, you know, kind of deal. So then I end up sending him to a guy that uh, I was gonna have him ride him kind of just in a round pen and, and ride him for a month or so and just put a little bit of a handle on him because where I live, there's no fences. It's just, Sudan is just farmland flat forever and no fences. So I needed him to be able, if I needed to stop, I need to be able to stop him. So I send him to a guy, he rides him a couple of months. And then the last day when I'm going to pick him up, he was gonna put one more ride on him I guess his dog came in the, the round pen with him, remix broken two, ended up bucking the guy off, broke his collarbone, had to go to the emergency room, shows up with a big sling around him and hands the horse back and it's like, hey man, hey, he's got a little bit of a handle on him, but you got your hands full. <laughs> and he just hands him back. And so I pay the guy and then, you know, kind of go from there. If I went through all of the things that me and that horse have been through, it would we would be here for hours and hours because we've been through a lot. But fast forward another year or so, I sent him to a guy in Canyon, Texas named Jason Thomas. And Jason is good with a horse, he's big. Jason could be a lineman in the NFL, like he's a big guy, really good hand with a horse and ropes good. So I sent him to him and I said, Jason, I need this horse. Like he needs a job daily, way more than I can put on him. And so I need you to, you know, a couple months worth, see what we, see what I have, you know, just kind of do your thing. I, that's all I'm gonna say. So then Jason ends up telling me the first 10 days in a row. And Jason, like when Remix would buck with me, I'm pulling on him to get his head up and not allow him to buck me off because I didn't want to get hurt. Well, Jason, on the other hand, when he gets on him and he starts bucking, which in remix wasn't that big, but he bucked pretty hard and Jason would give him his head and just pound him. I mean, just ride the hair off of him. So 10 days in a row, he goes through this with remix. Well, then once Remix figured out he couldn't buck him off, the next thing that happened was he would buck, he would ride him, Remix would throw his head up, go to shake him side to side and run off with you. So he said, okay, if we're gonna do that. He had several sections of land out there at Canyon. And so every morning he would saddle him up, go through the bucking thing, Remix would go to run off and they would just ride, just run the whole fence around the whole place. So this goes on for a while, a couple months, and it's through the summer, and uh, Jason ends up, i tell you what it was, I went back to the Spicer Grip roping in Hereford. Jason lives at Canyon, so it's right there. Brock Hansen is who I was roping with, and Brock is buddies with Jason, so he went over there and hung out and roped with him. So I said, hey, get on remix for me and ride him and see like what kind of progress we have. Cause Jason's real quiet and not gonna, doesn't want to say anything bad. Like he wasn't wanting to break my heart. So Brock goes over there and Brock shoots me straight after riding him one time. And he's like, Hey man, piece of crap. I'm talking just not going to work. Need to get rid of him. And so I was like, golly, I mean, surely I can at least make a practice horse out of him. So then I get him home. He sits still for a couple of months and then the winter rolls back around, it gets cold. And I had a guy call me one day, hey, I need some help doctoring some wheat pasture cattle. Can you help me? And I was needing a little money. He was gonna pay me a couple hundred bucks, day wages just to come rope these cows and help him. Well, all I had, other than my good horses, was Remix. So I saddled him up a day or two. He tries to buck me off. Well, and I'd kind of gotten a little more accustomed to riding him, so I'd been working on my saddle bronc riding, and I got to where I kind of liked the challenge of 
kind of give him his head and try to ride him, you know. So I go through that, and then I go help the guy, and what I did to help the guy doctor wheat pasture cattle is I would just tie on with a poly. We would get one sorted off. This guy didn't rope very good at all, but he did the doctoring. So I would just chase them, heal them, duck off, jerk them down. He would doctor them. We'd go do another one. Well, it's I'm t- it's 20 degrees and less and snow on the ground when we're doing all this. So I do this for a month or so, and then I was going over to Clovis to an indoor arena and giving lessons. And, and in the meantime, I'm just riding him, using him, start healing on him over there. And just out of the blue, I mean, you'd come around the corner one time to heal a steer and he would throw his head up and run off. And three different times, he jumped a fence with me. He would run off, get to the fence. And I'm not talking about like a short fence. I mean like normal arena fence. And just, I like the first time about kill me because the saddle horn hit me in the sternum because I'm thinking he's gonna stop and go one way or the other because he's just running off and he just loads up and just goes over it and so we did that three different times and then so I'm dealing with all this crap you know and little by little I'm roping on him going through the motions he's getting to where I can at least practice on him that kind of thing I moved to Stephenville, lived at Jade Corkle's place for a while. Jade would do Snapchats of, I would be roping on Remix, and then we'd just, he'd run off with me. And so when he'd run off with me, I'd just whip him. I'd just go, and we'd just run off for a while. And then he'd decide he was tired of running off, so then he'd, you know, stop. And then we'd go back in, we'd rope another steer. And so it was kind of an ongoing joke by this time, you know, it's, but, little by little then kind of several more months rolled around and then I, I'm going to the American to rope with Kobe Lovell and we first we had to go through the whole qualifying system and I go to north side to the semi-final deal I ride remix there he worked good I ride him at the American he worked good and we didn't win but we were one out of making the top four and it wasn't his fault like he he did a good job and at this point he's still bucking like he would still try to buck me off sometimes and he bucked me off four different times in mine and his life together he's bucked me off four times and um, one time was at a buddy of mine in New Mexico when he was pretty young and my rain broke and out the back I went and then the next time was at Chad Masters house just out of the blue, out in front of the box, he goes to bucking. And I ride him for a long time, and then I finally blow a stirrup, fall off. And one time was at David Key's house, and same deal. Just right out in front of the box, wasn't expecting it. Just goes to bucking. And he this time he wasn't kind of kicking out. He kind of cow kicked up under himself and caught me in the calf and just sent my leg like that. And then he hit on his front end and just did me a flip. And then the last time I was helping Bob Moat catch a cow and Remix, one of his things is he doesn't like to pull something that is kind of lugging him down in the saddle move and then he doesn't like that. So he went to bucking and I felt that my saddle come off the side and I fell off. But I count that as getting bucked off because I ended up on the ground. But so, you know, with all of those times when Remix would buck me off, then he would just stand there, take a deep breath and just look at me. <laughs> and then I would get up, catch my air, get back on him again, and then go about our business. We have went through a lot and, you know, continuing to keep, I, I finally one day I told him he bucked me tried to buck me off, run off with me, tried to jump a fence, fell on me, got back up. I stayed on him, just about killed him that day. And when we were all done, I grabbed the bridle and I looked him right in the eye and I said, Remix, I don't care if you die, but I'm gonna win. And he was lathered up and couldn't hardly breathe. And 
really from that day forward, that was several years ago, he hasn't bucked since. And he's turned into the horse that I rode most all of this year. He's been very consistent. He's, you know, I think all of those things built him into what we see today. And I don't know if there's very many guys that would be hard-headed enough to do what I did with him, but probably the fact that he was given to me and that I just didn't want to feel like a failure, that I couldn't at least make him into something. That's why I stayed with him and kept riding him. And, uh, and now, shoot, now I can actually like feed him full feed and he's not even on a diet now. <laughs> he's full and looks good and, and um, you know, so last night being the first steer that I've ever run on him at the NFR, I roped two feet and lost a leg, but it wasn't his fault. And he, he worked good and I expect him to continue. He's 10 years old now and he'll be 11 when the new year rolls around, but it feels like I've spent a lifetime getting him to this point but really and truly he's right on track with where most horses are going to be their best and that's that 10 to 15 uh, age group that where they really get solid they're mature they they know what their job is and um so he he's turned into a pretty good one i don't know that i would put him in the elite you know category with iceman and switchblade and jackal but he's we're still working to to get him there so i would say if things turn out really good and and want a gold buckle he would he would have to be right up there with those guys well that's a wrap for our story of remix Corey coons's cool done horse that came from jb quarter horses if you like this let us know because i would love to do some more horse stories like this in the years to come Looking forward to 2019. We've got so much cool stuff planned for you, and I appreciate everybody listening all year long. You've made this an amazing year. There have been 100,000 listens to this podcast, more than that, but we hit the 100,000 mark this fall, and I so appreciate you all. Have a great 2019, and looking forward to talking to you.